FY25 earnings conference call hosted by TAM Capital Advisors Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Bhumika Nair from DM Capital Advisors Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, warm welcome to the Q2 FI25 earnings call of Kalpatru Projects International Limited. Uh, we have the management today being represented by Mr. Manish Manon, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. S.K. Tripathi, Deputy Managing Director, Mr. Sanjay Dalmia, Executive Director, Mr. Amit Uplinchwa, Director Group Strategies, and Mr. Ram Patodia, Project uh, President Finance and CFO. At this point, I'll hand over the floor to Mr. Munon for his initial remarks, post which we'll open up the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Pumika. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the call today. Let me first provide a quick update on the operating context, move that and move on to our performance and key highlights of each of the individual businesses. Post the last interaction for the Q1 earnings conference, we have witnessed no quality improvement on the execution front, with improving labor availability and moderating working capital intensity compared to Q1 of FY25. Our TND, building and factories, oil and gas, and urban infra business, each at individual level have reported YOI growth in excess of 20% for the first half of 25. Our water business has remained subdued, which we will, which we expect will moderate the overall growth to some extent, but not significant. We have also completed the signing of definitive agreements for sale of India Shell Expressway VPL. We expect to close the deal for the seat of necessary approval from concerned authorities and lenders in the next few quarters. As far as business landscape is concerned, Government plans for infrastructure development, including the transmission and distribution capex, is getting better and firmer as we are progressing ahead in the year. In this backdrop, we have secured record order flows of rupees 11,865 crores, including 835 crores announced yesterday. Nearly 90% of our order flows are from TNG and BSF business, in which we continue to improve our capabilities and strengthen our market position. Additionally, we have an element position in orders worth 7,000 crores. More than 75% of this element position is in the domestic PNG business. Our control order book stands at rupees 60,631 crores at the end of September 24. Our order book remains well diversified across businesses and markets, which depicts inherent strength of our business model. Now, moving on to the performance. We have delivered yet another quarter of good performance marked by growth in turnover, improved profitability, moderation in debt levels as compared to June quarter. We reported a control revenue growth of 9% both for Q2 and first half of 25. Our control revenue reached rupees 4,930 crores for Q2 and rupees 9,517 crores for first half of 25. The revenue growth is largely driven by crude project progress and healthy auto backlog in that DAT, PSF, oil and gas, and urban business. Our control EBITDA margins improved by 70 basis points, YOI to reach 8.9% for Q2 2025. Our control EBITDA was up by 18%, YOI to reach 438,000 in Q2 2025. Similarly, our control PBT grew by 42% YOI to reach 188 crores and bank was up by 40% YOI to reach 126 crores for Q2 25. For the first half, the control PBT reached 325 crores and bank at 210 crores. This improvement in margins is driven by a combination of robust execution, healthy project mix, and diversified business profile. Our control net rate declined to rupees 3,668 crores in September 25. Compared to rupees 3,739 crores in June 24. Our control rate working capital has declined by 5 days compared to June quarter to reach 98 days at the end of September 24. Our standalone revenue was up by 8% YOY and standard rupees 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bharat Seth from Quest Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations, Manish ji and team on a good, very good result. Manish ji, I have two questions. First is on if we really look at, I mean, our uh, core B E P C business, which has grew as per segmental report by around 10 percent, and uh, EBITDA also improved by. Almost 53 percent. So, how do we see this business going ahead? Kind of a traction that we have based on the order book. So, uh, good morning, Mr. Bhai. Uh, actually, uh, the EBITDA growth is uh, very much uh, typically led by Q2 is always a secure quarter when it comes to EBITDA execution, given the monsoons, given all of that. Right? Uh, the good part is that across all businesses now visibility is very very good, except railways where we have partially taken a call. I believe going forward we should be doing much better in terms of delivering on on our projected numbers, delivering on our budgeted numbers, and also the next two quarters visibility on every front is very good. Right? Whether it is cash flow, whether it is labour availability, whether it is a wide mix of portfolios. So I think growth as well as improvement in margins is visible. We want to set the fact that margins are going up because the entire new order book which we got over the last two years is obviously at better margins than what we had from the past, and that in fact you should see it coming in. You know, you've seen some portion of it coming in Q2, and you expect us to see that over the next six eight, if not more than that part. So our own belief is that from a uh, two-year perspective, I think growth and improvement in margins is visible. And we should be able to deliver at least uh, whatever we have uh, committed in in every form. Yes, we have faced some challenges in the first six months, primarily in water business, right? And as I explained earlier, that you know that's something which uh, is beyond us because we have not been able to collect uh, in a, anything in a few states, right? Um, it was the election drive, it was the government change, whatever. Uh, we've been in continuous touch with them, and whatever we've lost in the first six months uh, might not come back in the current year. But on a whole of front, uh, you know that's something which will be delivered going into the next year. Sir, sir, is that I mean based on the your comment, is that that uh, again I mean on the this trend along our core ETC business, slowly we see the reduction in the borrowing, correct? Yes. Okay, and sir, uh, would you like? Uh, yeah. Uh, typically, our business first two quarters, you see always borrowing looking after being high. It's slightly higher than what we projected for us because given the the corrections which were delayed in the water business. Uh, pretty confident that going forward, Q2, Q4, uh, the debt levels will only come down from where we are today. It will not go up, and, and we stand committed to you know keeping a working capital base below 100 even at a standalone level by the end of Q4. That's a great, good sir. And would you like to revise our, I mean, uh, our uh, order intake uh, growth as well as uh, top line growth? So, first of all, clearly, as far as order intake growth is concerned, we stand committed to the number which we gave earlier. Uh, right. So, the focus right now is improving margins because we have a very good visibility on our book. So, while today we have visibility of around seventy thousand or so, including L one. Uh, we believe that for improving margins, even if you have to compromise slightly on on the absolute value, we are happy to do that. So we stand committed to the same number, 22, 23 thousand crores. We will revisit that number at the end of Q3 once we have more visibility coming through. As far as revenue growth is concerned, I think Q3, Q4 will be very healthy, and and I think that will help us deliver uh, healthy growth compared to what we did in the previous year. We definitely could face some challenges on whatever we have not been able to achieve in the water business in Q1 and Q2. Uh, but on an overall basis, we still believe that we'll see healthy growth going forward. And last question, sir, on uh, order inflow. In first half, we have seen that mix changing toward more towards the domestic. So, strategically, are we, I mean, focusing more on the domestic uh, in view of geopolitical uh, problem? Or so, if you can like to say. 
throw more color on that? No, I don't. I do not think consciously we are doing anything uh, driven by geopolitics. Yes, we continue to be risk averse on areas where you know we don't have things to go from bad to worse. Uh, the TNT growth in the domestic front was visible right now, March April onwards, and those have got converted now. Uh, we continue to stay bullish in the international front also, but we, we continue to be risk averse based on the volatile environment. So I think strategically it's changed a lot. Um, you will see international outlook going up in Q3, Q4. Uh, but for us, I think more important for us is uh, you know, looking at the return ratio more than anything else. Uh, because today everyone has healthy outlook. We have to master that code where we can deliver on time and where both are high and where our pressures are getting allotted. And that's why I clearly articulated that TAB and BNF, if you look at what, you know, we have whatever orders they have bought in the first six months, I will do a segment, which are four segments for us. Thank you very much, sir. I wish you happy Diwali, you and your team, and all the Thank best you. for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Amit Anwani from PL Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, an audible? Yes, yes, very much. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> so my first question is uh, on the non-core assets. If you would like to update on uh, uh, for the quarters, three Shubham Logistics uh, and uh, also in the indoor real estate and third the part is vpl how much was our investment and what are the expectations uh, on exit uh, gains uh, yeah okay, so i think let me start with vpl first uh, as mentioned earlier our enterprise value is around 775 crores uh, and over the period of the next two till we uh, hand over the asset uh, whatever cash flows uh, come in would get adjusted to the enterprise value so we get the benefit of whatever cash flows happen from now till that time uh, we expect this deal to be closing in the next uh, six to nine months depending upon the necessary approvals um, we believe with uh, at the current enterprise level we have a gain of approximately 100 crores over the equity which we have invested uh, and this gain could be different depending upon the closing, whatever happens at the closing time, but it should be in this range. Uh, as far as uh, the Shubham business is concerned, um, we are looking at more Shubham from a revenue perspective or more from a high yield growth. As far as Shubham business is concerned, half one is 25, they've done around 62 crores, growth of 10%. Uh, and on a overall basis at the PPT level, uh, we have become positive. So the margins are closer to 1.3 crores. Uh, on a Q, Q1 basis and a half a basis around 7.8 crores. So margin of around 10 to 11 percent and a compliance growth of 10 percent as far as sugar is concerned. On the indoor front, we have not done much sales in Q2, uh, given that Q2 has all these two challenges on uh, and all of that, uh, but we expect sales to grow significantly in Q3 and Q4. We're expecting the OC of the last building to come uh, anytime in the next one month. Um, and once that happens, we should be existing in law fully in the next uh, two to three quarters itself. We think there's a traction there, and we believe that uh, that would definitely be possible. Sure, sir. <clears throat> and just to reconfirm, are we maintaining our guidance given during Q1 on uh, revenue front? Because I can see H1 is about 5% revenue growth, and uh, H2 ask credit is quite high. So that is one and second on PBT last time we guided four and a half to five percent. So are we maintaining these guidances for uh, console uh, level? So uh, at the PBT level, we definitely believe that uh, we should be in that range what we have guided for our annualized basis. At the revenue level, um, you know, we, we've seen some challenges in the water business and that could impact some of our guidance on annualized basis. Although on, a few, uh, on the next two quarter front, we are pretty confident of a very healthy growth. Yeah. <laughs> and lastly, on international TND, you said uh, there has been a pretty uh, strong development there. Any specific geographies where uh, you are sensing this? Because we are seeing geopolitically things have been unstable. We just wanted to understand uh, which geographies in international market uh, for TND and other businesses are really uh, becoming fruitful now. 
For KPI, I think there are opportunities uh, in, on the international front, primarily a lot more in cartoon subsidiaries, which are Vijay Mantaj and Parker, which are doing extremely well, driven by the Sweden, driven by the Nordic and the Brazilian market. We continue to stay bullish for the CIS in, in the Latin America segment also, where we today have leadership position, economic projects across Chile, Guyana, Surina, Malaka. Uh, finally, this thing good traction in Africa and Middle East also, although they're not so much uh, bullish on Middle East in the TAB segment driven by profitability constraints, but we see good opportunities coming up there also. So, uh, if you ask me priority wise, Europe continues to be the first, Latin America continues to be the second, driven by Africa and then Middle East. Sir, so, so thanks for taking my question all the best. Thank you. So, thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Sa from HGFC Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, so just had a couple of questions. One, uh, on the water business, uh, you did say that uh, the first half was slow because of the uh, you know water co collections being delayed. How are things looking on the ground now? Have the uh, you know has the government started disbursing the money and releasing payments and and are you seeing an improvement as we speak on the ground on water side? Good morning, Ashish. Good morning. Uh, Ashish, we have significant presence in five states. Um, I'm not getting into the detailing of each of the states, but I can say out of the five states, three states we have seen good traction in the last 15 days, where uh, you know more than 70 or 80 percent of whatever was billed has been paid. Uh, but the other two states we see zero traction, right? So as with the other two states we have, and uh, you know, a huge amount which is outstanding for more than 180 days. Uh, and so we believe they would, it should change soon. One of the states is just going into election, and one of them we've seen a government change which happened uh, three months ago. Uh, so we are working along with the states. Uh, if you personally ask me, maybe it might take two, three more months to for those states to come back to reality. But the three states, which is more than 70% of our order book, we have seen traction coming back. And to that extent, at least you will see delivery improving in Q3. Uh, but how we back for it is normally across the entire business, the answer would be no as of now. Okay. So would you expect this business or this segment to end uh, <clears throat> at a similar level as last year, or, or it may be actually lower? So our own drive is to make sure that at least the growth is striking as compared to last year. Right? It's good for the division, it's good for the uh, employees, it's good for the operation as a well. whole. That's the drive. But realistically, uh, if collections don't improve, right? after a point, it would be difficult for us to keep on pumping in cash flow to continue delivery. But yes, as of today, our internal drive is to make sure that we at least do minimal of what they did in the previous year, and as a combination, we're driving towards that. Right, sir. And uh, also on the oil and gas business, uh, you know, the big pipeline contract that we have now, uh, how do you see that shaping up in terms of de the, the development cycle? Uh, when do the revenues hit the PNL? And how would you expect that contract to flow through our, our numbers? I think the revenues have already started hitting the PNL. Our IPs are revenues, maybe not a profit till now, because we do not recognize profit till, uh, you know, which is 10% of its revenue. Uh, but on the revenue front, you've already seen Saudi Arabia coming in. Uh, execution on the ground actually started on all the big projects which we've got. Uh, the team is fully there, the uh, equipment has been mobilized, uh, all the design is more than 50% of design is already done. So if you ask me, as of now, the, the uh, traction has started. What would be the peak? The peak would be next year, uh, the entire 25 26 in terms of delivery. But in terms of uh, revenue visibility, they've already seen that. That's why you've seen a 170% plus growth in, in Q2 and in the oil and gas business. And you see that similar action going on at least for the next four to six quarters. Sure. And just one last thing uh, on the uh, domestic TND uh, pipeline. Obviously, you've indicated that a lot of your L1 orders are from the domestic TND. How's the margin outlook for some of these orders? Are is the competitive environment still benign uh, as it used to be, and and we are able to get these orders at a good margin? Compared to what we have seen over the last five years, the margins are much better. It might not be those days which were there 15 years ago, right, or 15 percent plus, but definitely we're reaching that double digit margin as far as TND is concerned. Uh, it's a very healthy uh, visibility today. 
And given the kind of work which is available, I think there's enough work for everyone on, uh, whoever is in this field. So it's not a competitive drive, it's your ability to deliver which, which defines what work you can take. Uh, so today models are improving, visibility is good, and competition is, is what it is. Uh, there's so much visibility that I don't think competitive intensity would change the margin profile. Got that, sir. Thank you, that's all, and uh, uh, wish you all a very happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you, Ashish. Wishing you and your family a very happy The next question is from the line of Suhadeep Mitra from Nuama. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, thanks for the uh, uh, the comments that you mentioned on the overall order into and margins. My understanding is that you are clearly focusing more on execution and margins, given that there is ample order and flow to be had. Uh, so, just to focus on the order and flow piece, right? Given that you have a larger component that's coming from the India business. Are you looking at a very large, uh, you know, chunky orders which could potentially come from the two or three HVDC projects which are currently under tendering? And what kind of, you know, potential time can you build in for yourself? So, uh, we already L1 in one large HVDC project, uh, which, which has uh, two, three, two, three specific components of that project, the substation and buffer of uh, transmission line. We already have one in that and we expect that order to come in uh, any time in the next two to three weeks itself. Uh, going forward, yes, a lot of maturity projects we are building, uh, along with poverty and along with some of the private sector players. Uh, we do believe that we should be getting some more orders getting into the next uh, two to three months. Uh, I do not understand the meaning of junkie, but for us, steady order which is above 5 square with a reasonable margin, so with a double digit margin is, is as good as anything else. Uh, so, to put it differently, we definitely believe the ND order book will further go up in the next six months. We definitely believe we'll have some more orders coming in the HPDC space. Uh, the orders could be in the same sense of 500 to 700 stores, individual orders could even be slightly less. Uh, and the next six months, uh, Clearly looks like the AT domestic uh, on the order plant uh, on all aspects. Understood. So if I heard you correctly, I think you mentioned that each of these uh, packages could be around 500 to 700 crores. Uh, and, and typically, if an FGD, FGDC project is worth, let's say, 15 to 20,000 crores, it, would it be right to assume that roughly 50% of that is what falls in the EPC bucket? Yeah, I think it, could, it might be different. You know, including substation at times, it could even be more than that. Uh, but if you remove, for example, the, the transformer side of it, you know, the equity instruments which are given, which are bought directly by power grid, then uh, 40 to 50 percent would be EPC is the right uh, estimate, including substation. Understood. And and in this specific FVDC bucket, my understanding is that there are very few uh, qualified uh, EPC uh, competitors, right? So probably maybe three, four, or five players. So would there be a possibility of snatching seeing better margins given limited competition and a large time? I think, you know, uh, two aspects. Uh, I repeat what I said earlier, the competition is healthy. And we have to use healthy competition given that uh, we have advantage on everything, right, from supply chain to design to delivery. Uh, as far as improvement in market is concerned, definitely that's the intent. But let's be very clear that uh, whoever is a developer, they also compete in a TPGP environment. So you cannot expect unrealistic margins because suppose the time for the developer and he loses and he loses the EPG project. So yes, margins are going to be healthy. They will improve, but they will not be unrealistic because it's a competitive market. Understood. So, so you did mention in an earlier comment uh, that you were looking at close to double-digit margins at least in the TND segment. Uh, that's more or less what we should assume. Yes, for sure. Perfect, sir. Perfect. That is understood. So my last bit is on the international, uh, you know, orders, especially the large chunky orders that you saw from Middle East uh, earlier in the year. Given where uh, you know hydrocarbon prices are headed currently. Is there any risk of a slowdown uh, in terms of, let's say, incremental ordering or even execution of existing order book uh, from the Middle East exposure? So today, we are largely working with oil and gas from the Saudi Aramco order. Right? We have started work on uh, the entire all the packages 
which we have, uh, you know, there's obviously could be some changes in the value there, right? That's driven by the nature of the business. But the size of the order itself is so big for us that at least from the next uh, 18 to 24 month perspective, we have a handful. And I think we are already qualified at Ednock, we are there in Aramco, we are there in a few more, uh, you know, countries and Middle East that we are qualified to other gas business. We see good traction there uh, for various reasons. One, because the capex in the majority of the countries is on the upside. Second, there are limited players globally who are doing this kind of projects. So I'm not so much worried about uh, getting an order there. Uh, and at, at the current environment, at the current speed, things are happening. I think delivery in terms of projects will also not be a challenge. Understood, sir. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vaibhav Shah from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, when do we expect the cash inflow to come from the VEPLD? So, uh, you know, there are a lot of approvals which we need to take, uh, right? Now, uh, maximum is about 1,000 uh, we ourselves believe it could be anywhere between six to nine months. We'll work hard to see if it can happen before March, but realistically, it would get into 25, 26. And what would be the usage? So, will we repay the debt in the other two assets, the third party debt? It's basically primarily for working capital. And what could come in for the standalone company after repaying those uh, third party debt? I think, uh, you know, out of the general enterprise value of 750 plus close, uh, the external data is closer to 350 or close. It's closer to 300 close, if I'm not mistaken. The balance should come to the company. Sorry, it might be in the test for me. 260 close is the external data, and everything else should come to the company. Okay, okay. So, secondly, we mentioned that we want to do a QIP up to 1000 crores. So, what could be the usage of those uh, funds? And when are you targeting to do the QIP? So I think the, the board has yesterday approved the QIP process and now we'll be going to the shareholders for approval. Uh, the primary reason for the QIP would be utilizing it for working capital for the growth which is visible now. Uh, we are not in a position to deliver timeline right now except that the board has approved it and we'll be going to shareholders for and the, the value of the QIP is 1000 crores uh, and not 2000. I think what has been approved is up to 1000 crores. Yes, yes. Sir, and uh, lastly, on the revenue guidance front, we had mentioned 20% plus kind of growth in the previous call. So, uh, can you give a particular number right now? What when can we build in for the entire year for FI25 on the standalone basis? So, given the current challenges we have on our water business, you know, where uh, uh, it was very different when we started the year versus what it is today, uh, becoming difficult for us to give guidance uh, in totality. As I mentioned earlier, all our business is except water and 20% plus in the first six months, except water and railway. Uh, I believe those businesses will continue to do well. Uh, and I also believe that Q3, Q4 will be much better than what we have seen in Q1, Q2. But given the current volatility of that situation in the water business, I'm not able to give you an indicative number, but I definitely believe that we might not be able to achieve what we had targeted at the beginning of the year. We could be slightly lower than that. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, we had mentioned in the PPT that around 40 odd crores uh, funding we have done for the road portfolio in first half. So, what would be the number for the entire year and uh, what would be the say for the next year as well, given the cash inflows would be coming maybe in first or second quarter next year? I think we have targeted for around 75 crores inflow in the current year. And when we stand today, I believe we should be at similar numbers, plus minus five, five, ten crores. As I mentioned earlier, this entire uh, majority of this amount is going to repay the debt because uh, all projects the debt uh, will be repaid over the next three years max. Uh, so it's, it's only a timing mismatch more than anything else. So I think we will stand at a budgeted number of 75 crores and should be in that range as far as road projects are concerned. And for 26? Uh, our 26 numbers we have not yet uh, articulated those numbers, but uh, in case the deal happens, obviously the numbers would, in case the cash flow comes in, which we are hoping it will, the numbers would reduce significantly. It would be opposite, right? And the funding would come from them to us. Okay, and so lastly, over a longer time frame, what kind of EBITDA margins are we targeting? So currently we are roughly around 8.5% uh, on EBITDA front on a standalone basis. 
so what could uh, so what could be a uh, our target over the next couple uh, two to three years in terms of margin expansion so i think clearly we we have articulated in the past also that we are more focused on ppt margins now uh, and i think that margin we definitely expect uh, to improve by at least 25 to 50 basis points getting into the next year um, and that's what similar you see at a at a EBITDA level i think the more important thing is also to look at the consolidated markets right because today consolidated business has significant business which comes from our core tnd in sweden core tnd in brazil uh chili subsidiary uh, all of them so i think it's important going forward that to look at the consolidated numbers also where margins are reached EBITDA margins closer to 9% And I believe that number should only go up because there are no surprises left on that margin anymore. So on a consolidated basis, I think uh, the number should go uh, above nine sooner than later. On a standalone basis, I think you'll slowly see margins improving with a clear 25 to 50 basis point uh, up uh, improvement coming into the next few years. Okay, thank you, sir. Those are my questions. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, Deepak. Good morning. You're audible. Yeah, good morning. So, just wanted to check uh, the if you want to increase in our finance costs when that sort of debt levels have gone down due to include collections. Any effects or any other factor that has caused our, uh, you know, interest expense to increase on a sequential basis? No, I think it's primarily driven by two aspects. Uh, one, you uh, know, volume was significantly higher for the first two months of the quarter. Uh, as I said earlier, because the water money started coming in later part of the quarter. Second, interest cost has been slightly higher driven by uh, customer advances, where interest rates are more in the range of nine to ten percent. And even our approved auto group, we have advances also, which is slightly gone up. But as I said earlier, on annual basis, we still targeting our interest cost as a percentage of sales to be below two percent. Uh, with net working capital as a percentage, so it's only a timing issue of Q2, and I would expect this to improve getting into Q3 onwards. On an actual demo, obviously, with the growth, the interest cost is going to blow up, right? And it's not expected because uh, it's slightly higher than the revenue growth, uh, but. Any issue more than anything else? Uh, sure, sir. And maybe just from a revenue perspective, I think we understand this year. You know, water has been slightly slow, and we may be lower than the 20% number. But given that you know the backlog is closer to 60,000 crores, should we see a sharp uptake in 26 and 27? How are we looking at it? Extra water, if we look at all of it. Now, how do we see growth beyond the current year as well? I think the current order book clearly gives us uh, good visibility even for next year in terms of uh, very good growth with improved margins. I would not like to quantify that growth at this stage, given that you know we still have the next five six months to to build an order book or to get into a definitive situation on various aspects. Uh, but with the current order book visibility, I think uh, uh, a healthy growth in improved margins is visible for sure. Uh, sure, sir. Those are my questions. Uh, Thanks of uh, and best of luck to your callers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kandal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, Manish ji. Congratulations on a decent quarter, sir. So my first question is on the domestic TND. So you said that there's a L1 sitting in your order book on HDFC side. So if you can quantify uh, that and what is the HDFC pipeline right now? So clear, uh, in the domestic business, we have run up closer to 5,000 odd crores as I said earlier, uh, around 5,500 crores. And HVDC of that would be closer to 2,500 plus crores. Uh, it's in front of me, it's closer to 3,000 crores, including the, the substation business. So out of the 5,500 crores, 3,000 plus is HVDC, uh, where Powerade has already won the reverse auction or the TBCP bid and uh, they've got clearance from the government to go ahead with the project. So we expect that interest the awards to come in any time in the next two, three, four weeks. Uh, going forward, there are a couple of large HVDC in the underbid now. Um, I think uh, the value could be in the range of 50 to 20,000 crores. All this happening in the next uh, couple of months itself. Uh, we are working, as I said earlier, with Powerade and with some private developers on those projects. 
Uh, I would like you to quantify, uh, you know, our scope of what we are working on given the confidentiality at this stage. But definitely in the next uh, three to four months, I think that tenders were at least 50 to 20,000 dollars in HVDC, which uh, are then bid by RMC and uh, PFC. Okay. So, so, what is the name of this project? Is it the Kavra one, sir? Or which one? What is this project? Which yeah, this is Kavra. Okay. And uh, the other question, connected question, is beyond the HVDC pipeline, which may be very healthy for this year. So, how do you think would the next year look from the HVDC side? And beyond the HVDC, what are the other transmission opportunities in domestic, if you can quantify? I think uh, you know the entire environment on on TNT has changed significantly in the last six months, right? Driven by a lot of aspects. I think driven by the first aspect has been a refocus on thermal power generation, where you can see a lot of tenders coming by NTPC and other private sector developers on on coal, the mega tenders coming in for which they will require the capacity to uh, make sure that uh, the delivery happens. Second, strengthening of the HVDT, uh, which will continue going into the next year also. Third is looking at projects which are coming in uh, northeast as well as in, in Jammu Kashmir. And for the strengthening of the system itself, I'm sure you would have seen the NEP which just came out last month, where they have clearly said that uh, the transmission capacity needs to improve around 40% in the next five years to what it is today. So, given that, I think uh, visibility looks very good. Right? And it's only about you know making sure that we can deliver on, on the stringent timeline. Because today, majority of the projects are 24 to 36 months. There's nothing beyond that. And that's more important for us to ensure that we deliver on stringent timelines. So for me, the next two years clearly looks like a very big bullish drive on the end domestic. Remember by all aspects which I mentioned earlier, we could easily see orders. Uh, what 50 to 60,000 crores only for NPC TND coming in only on these three four things. Besides the state level orders, which would be different. So we continue to stay very bullish. It's completely opposite to what I found in the last three years, where if you would have heard me, I used to say that if the TND business, if it does 5 to 7 percent, we'll be happy. But now I think that business definitely can look at a 20 percent plus growth, uh, at least from a linear perspective, if not beyond that. And with improved margins. Got it. So, uh, the, what is the timeline of this HVDC execution? I think you said in the next uh, couple of weeks or three weeks you will get the order. So, from then, uh, how much time do you need HVDC to complete? HVDC of this project has 36 to 42 months. Okay. And all of the substation which will be slightly low, but otherwise 36 to 42 months. Okay. Well, the second question is on the fundraise. So you have announced 1,000 crores fundraise. So now if I uh, look at the context, so you have monetized, uh, announced a deal wherein you will get some money. You have claims upwards of 300 crores, which may get realized over the two years. So roughly after repaying everything, you still have 750 to 800 and then indoor ads on top of it. So you will closely touch about 900 to 1,000 crores of inflows in the next two years. So what are you seeing? Are you seeing a deterioration in networking capital in the near future? Uh, because even at growth of 15 to 20 percent, uh, I think you will still be in WC positive in a scenario when you are looking at going below 100 days. So what is driving this one raise? It's just that the market sentiment is favorable. That, that's the reason you're looking at it. Or, so how do we read into it? So I think it was a very good question. And this was the exact question with the board uh, raised yesterday. And uh, good to spend a few minutes on this. Uh, I think first thing is uh, important to understand that majority of the business where we are are effects intensive in Right. 30%, 35% of our free cash flow has gone only in CapEx in the last three years. 40% has gone in working capital. And the balance 30 has gone as uh, dividend and interest payment and all of that. So, when we, I think when we looked at the next three years, given the healthy order book, we realized that it's a combination of three, four things which we need to take care of. First is the CapEx drive, because without CapEx, a lot of projects might not be delivered. Whether it is the BNF where you need to stay each other, whether it's oil and gas in Saudi or wherever else where you need equipment, whether it's the international transmission line uh, requirements where you have to send because there are no capex in those countries, or whether it's the plant expansion, right? Our capacity of around 220, 230 thousand tons, uh, we might need to revisit that and look at expansion there also. So it was first driven by a requirement of saying that how much do we need in terms of capex to make sure that the healthy growth continues. Second, the reality also is that while we've been able to manage working capital, it becomes it's becoming more intense because a lot of projects are now milestone-based payments which are back-ended. We already had the 10% retention, but we 
it also a milestone based payment. And given that also, it was important to make sure that given the growth rate for the next three years, we have enough liquidity with us. Third, the timing of all that cash flow which you said could be nine months, could be twelve months, could be fifteen months, because they depended on external factors. But we go back to get it. Because remember, the same project we have arbitration amount also which we have won in, uh, and which we have declared in the last two quarters. Now obviously we have arbitration efforts to be taken from the client and we'll go to them, I don't see a school of that, it's not going to be an easy journey. Yes, we want to walk through it, it's not going to be an easy journey. So to that extent, there is, there is a timing issue which could also be there. Right. And four, uh, you know, in the current environment, we believe that it's better to be on, on, on the right side of the banking environment with, with stringent norms on uh, a lot of issues. Uh, you know, and, and so it's, it's better to be on the right side on all the issues from a banking environment, and this would help us achieve that also. And fifth and the most important are, like I said in 2010, and from 2010 to now, the organization has grown uh, more than 15 times, right, through internal cash flows. So I think it was a mix of all five, six of them which do that. Uh, you know, the market has been like this for the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, so it's not driven by necessarily the market sentiment, it is yet it helps for sure. It was a mix of the scope, I think. Added to that, uh, clearly we have opportunities of acquisition also in the manufacturing space within where we are. We are not going to diversify anything. And that's something also which we have not looked uh, very closely given that all our cash flows are already blocked for working capital and JPEX. So I think it's a mix of all of those five and six things which help us to say that what do we do? And that's why the board is going to be that, you know, this could be a good step looking at the three years or five year perspective. Okay. And um, uh, sorry, you said manufacturing into manufacturing. I saw your voice was a little bit uh, was not. Yes, yes, manufacturing opportunities within the sectors where we are. There's no diversification, but get into the value chain within that. So our plants, they are already doing stitching, shattering, they are doing girder, they are doing our DND, they could do a lot more in oil and gas, they could do a lot more in water, they could do a lot more in urban infra. So my, what do you mean by manufacturing, sir? I mean, is it like you're looking at uh, something on the solar side, so or the conductors? I mean, looking to increase or uh, set up conductor capacity. So what what do you mean by manufacturing? So our right now our focus is within the steel sector, within the steel segments, or I would say within the fabrication, galvanizing, and high end fabrication sectors is what our focus is. So let's say the railway cutters, you know, the staging shutting which we use for B and F. Uh, the let's say the pipes for water where welding is required, right? Oil and gas, whatever is required, so those things can still be done at a plant at Raipur, where we have a huge land available with us, and that's some expansion which we could look at. We've not zeroed down on anything as of now. What is the possibility which we could look at? So it is within the value chain of the businesses that we already are in. And I again want to remind you, majority of this plant expansion would be for our own ETC business. Not into conductors and all. Now you're not shutting up a conductor line. Hello. I'm, saying, I'm asking you. Are you also looking to set up a conductor line like some of the peers are doing conductor for backward integration and also to sell in market? So you have power capacity. So looking at setting up, and you have any plans to set up conductor capacity as well? We're not looking at that opportunity as of now. Uh, but uh, I do not know how things turn up in the future. But as of now, we're not looking at that. Okay. And just lastly, sir, any exposure to Bangladesh? I think we were doing something on the power evacuation site for the Roper power plant. So any anything there, uh, any update on that? So on, the, on the power transmission side, we have completed the project two years ago. We have a small retention which is pending, but since it's funded, we do not believe a challenge in getting that money. On the railway side, we have a project which is on, which is funded by Exim, uh, where it's, uh, uh, it's along with EFCON, we're doing that project. Uh, again, on that project also, we are cash flow positive, and I do not see any challenges on that project also. Are you been getting payments after the uh, change in government there? Are, we, uh, are you seeing any delays or the payments are on time, or has the work stopped or restarted? So any update on that? So we've not. Uh, so we first had to remove the entire team, which was done when all this happened. Now the teams have gone back in the last two weeks. Uh, we've obviously not made any invoices because the last three months we've not done any work. So I think the teams have just gone back, and I believe Q4 onwards, the, the remediation should also start, and collection should also start, because it's all funded by you. So I do not see a challenge in that in any form. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, and wish you happy day, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Ashwini Sharma from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, most of the questions of mine have been answered. And just a couple of things. One is that uh, if you can comment, Manish sir, on the uh, tendering on the metro side, how 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 are the activity over there? And secondly, on the water side, we understand you know this year it is a little bit of challenging. How do you see pipeline in FY26 and you know uh, thereafter? Yeah, those were my questions. Uh, let me let me first answer the water side and on the metro side, I will ask my colleague Amit to answer. Uh, on the water side, uh, clearly as I mentioned earlier, the first six months we have not seen many tenders come up. So post elections, uh, what we were expecting, a lot of tenders they have not come up. We believe it's only a timing issue because uh, as far as the Jaldiman Day of the entire plan is concerned, there is a lot more which needs to be done at a country level. Uh, so current year, maybe it could be subdued in terms of tender, but getting into next year, we believe that those tenders should be back in every form. Uh, on the metro side, I would request my colleague Amit to just respond to this question. Hi, Parishit. Uh, so, you know, today, uh, so far as metro segment is concerned, if you look at our population and our usage of metro per person compared to most of the other countries like China, US, and all that, we are far, far behind. And now that uh, you know there is no other option as most cities that cross 25, 30 lakhs in terms of population, mobility is becoming a huge problem. And now that barrier is gone. Most of these are funded projects by JICA, EIB, ADB, etc. And they see that as a long-term stable sovereign uh, guarantee from the Indian government to lend at very, very attractive rates. We've got, uh, you know, this metro in Nagpur, uh, which we've just become uh, Elva, this is a 17 kilometer elevated metro. So, you know, the size and scale of these metros are becoming large and in individual packages, which make them very attractive for uh, large players like us because the sensible competition prevails there with five or six people who are all similar kind of peer groups. There is now a metro coming in uh, Lucknow, Delhi, Bombay, Pune, all of these cities with a mix of underground and above ground metros called are expanding. So I think from, from the next two Korea perspective, we already have visibility of which metro are coming and we believe it's an attractive segment to see. Well, I just want to understand: Is there any slackness in the in the current year as far as tendering is concerned? Is there a slowdown? I don't see. So, typically, unlike a transmission, a metro takes a long time from a bid to an award cycle because one, they have to go to their funding agencies and multilaterals for approvals, etc. At every stage, so that adds uh, time to from tender to award. Also, second, uh, you know, the time required for bidding because these are very, very complex projects in terms of engineering during tendering phase. The entire tendering period also is much longer than, you know, conventional projects in other businesses. So, while there is uh, the number of projects that have been announced this year, they've been a little slow because of government and a lot of code of conduct, etc. But I think next year onwards, as the cycle picks up, you'll have five or six seven bits across various metros at any given time going on. So I think that little sluggishness that could have been there this year, because not because of demand, but because of, uh, you know, elections, etc., should uh, ease out. Okay. And last question uh, to the Manishji, sir. At a company level, um, how do you see supply chain? Have we, uh, has our supply chain fully, uh, you know, uh, completely improved? I mean, it had, it's at a pre-COVID level. Or still we are facing some challenges? I think uh, we're back to what we were at a pre COVID, if not better than that, with uh, a lot of people expanding their capacity also. We still have some challenges in some equipments, but that has reduced from a scale of scale, I would say, to two. Uh, yes, uh, at times the global uncertainties do impact us, the entire thing what happened at Red Sea and all of that. But again, uh, just a timing issue, a few months here and there. But uh, uh, we'll be back to normalcy in 9 out of 10 cases, if not uh, 10 out of 10 cases. Okay, sir. Those were my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anuj Upadhyay from Investec. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. So it's a follow-up on the uh, 60 or 1,000 crores of opportunity you referred <coughs> on the T&D space. So this is spread across over the next two years kind of a time period. And with uh, uh, such a scalability of uh, opportunity, how do you see uh, the competitive intensity out here? And just to get a sense on how the margins could be across this project because the overall market size has scaled up significantly. So as I said earlier, the competition in TNG continues to stay healthy, and to me, actually, the competition is healthy across majority of our businesses except railways. Right? And really, competition is always good for everyone. You know, everyone in the uh, sector, everyone in the business is good for them. Um, as I mentioned earlier, while we definitely see markets improving from what we have seen in the past, but it's coming to beyond the point because. Whoever the developer you are writing with, they also in the TPCP environment have to fight against the, you know, the large developers. So yes, the market are moving up. They have reached a particular level. Personally, if you ask me, can it go significantly higher from there? My answer is no. It is still a very competitive environment, both at TPCP as well as at the EPC level. But it's healthy competition. You now don't see differences in in tenders which are like 20, 25, 30%. You now see differences which are more than 3, 4%. And the competition is very good for for all of us. Uh, got it, sir. And the sixty thousand opportunity you referred is over next two years time period because uh, last week one of the developer asset developer had referred that close to around one lakh crores of uh, bidding is scheduled to happen over next six to seven months kind of a time period. So just more to get sense. The sixty thousand you referred was. I believe this could happen in the next twelve months itself. You know, I said fifty to sixty thousand on an annualized basis for the next three years of delivery. Uh, so this is fifty to sixty thousand on an annualized basis minimum. I think it could be higher than that, but on an annualized basis, it's not for two years. It's on an annualized basis. That's helpful, sir. And lastly, on the pledge share, sir, in the last call you had mentioned that uh, probably you know uh, the percentage of the Promoter share might come down to a single digit. So, any thought or update on that front? No, no I think you you got the wrong words. I never mentioned the single digit ever, right? I was very clear what I mentioned that they would come down below 30 percent. Right now, they are at around 23.46 percent. Clearly, the intent is to continuously reduce it, and we believe that uh, you know over a period of time this will come down. Over the history of this pledge, 18 years I've been with the organisation. It's always been in excess of 30. Now they're at 23 percent, and this will continue to go down. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks for this, and wish you all a very happy Diwali, sir. Thank you very much. Wishing you also very happy Diwali. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kandal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. So thanks for the follow. So my question is on margins. If I go a little back in the history, so three four quarters back, I mean you were more confident on doing a double digit margin. Though your commentary on segment wise margins improvement or reaching double digit even in domestic T and D is uh, sounds to be positive, but uh, the signaling on